All right. Welcome to Math 103. This is section 2.5. We're going to be talking about linear inequalities in this lecture. First of all, let me uh, just start off with some notation. <clears throat> Let's talk about some uh, graphs of linear inequalities. If I'm, uh, of course, uh, talking about inequalities, uh, talking about the less than, the, the greater than, the greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, um, the solutions that we'll get in this particular uh, section, we'll look, one possibility might be something like this, which of course x less than 2 there. And of course uh, one thing to want to know is uh, you understand that what that means on the number line here. And so yeah, that <coughs> is the less than symbol. And so on the number line here, if we have 2 right there, we're talking about everything less than 2. And so we'd uh, indicate that <coughs> there. And uh, we don't want to include 2 in this case. We don't have the equal to part. And so notationally wise, uh, what we put at 2, right on the 2 there, is we put a parentheses. Now on the other hand, if we had x is less than or equal to 2, well, of course that would mean same basic part of the number line, everything less than 2. But we'd want to include 2, we've got the equal to part, and so for that reason, we indicate that with a different symbol. We use a bracket, square bracket. Always indicates that the endpoint is included. All right, then of course uh, the greater than. Why is greater than or equal to negative four? Well, that's the other side. Everything greater than negative four would be a part of this solution set here. And we would include the endpoint, so we'd use a bracket. Okay, now, <clears throat> when we get to uh, inequalities that look like this, for obvious reasons, it's called a three part inequality because there's three parts. Well, what does that mean? Um, <clears throat> Actually, it's it's fairly easy, but let's let's just kind of break it down. This these two kind of work in conjunction. I want uh, I've got a two two inequalities basically. I've got the uh, three is less than x inequality, and then I have the x is less than ten. Of course, x being less than ten. Here's my ten, and I want <coughs> less than ten there. But I also want at the same time, 3 is less than x. Well, if we think, uh, think about that just a little bit, let me make a note here, uh, <clears throat> break that down a little bit. 3 is less than x. Well, it turns out in uh, cases such as that, you might want to think about flipping that around. And if you flip it around, just remember that the inequality points towards the same thing. And uh, it's pointing at the 3 there, so it's got a point at the 3 here. So 3 is less than x actually also means 3 is greater than, uh, excuse me, x is greater than 3. And so here's 3. I want 3 is less than x, which is x greater than 3. So I also want x being greater than 3. So that's the greater than side of 3. So you put those two together. Yeah, you've got everything here. So what? <clears throat> 3 is less than x is less than 10 means is everything between 3 and 10. Now, the uh, inequalities are strictly less than, so you, you would use the parentheses here. And so, yeah, 3 is less than x is less than 10 means everything between 3 and 10, which, if you look at the inequality there, <coughs> x is between 3 and 10 in the inequality, so it uh, makes sense that when we graph it on the number line, it, it also is between. All right, now you can, uh, of course, have the equal to part. Um, you can have a mixture. Just 
try it. 5 is less than or equal to t is less than 12. Well, again, we've got 5, then t, then 12. Yeah, that's going to mean everything between the 5 and 12. So part of the number line we're talking about there, everything between. And we've got the equal to part on 5, so that would be a bracket. We don't have the equal to part on the 12, so that would be a parenthesis. Okay. Now the other <coughs> part to these inequalities as far as their answers are concerned is, is writing interval uh, parts of the number line in interval notation or inequalities in interval notation. Uh, by interval notation what we mean it's <coughs> it's just a notation where you put the uh, left endpoint comma, the right endpoint, and then you put parentheses, brackets, whatever uh, the case calls for around those. That's kind of what your interval notation looks like. And so if we had, like we had uh, above there, 3 is less than x is less than 10, <coughs> well, we've got, uh, of course, everything between 3 and 10. And so in interval notation, the interval notation for this particular problem here, well, we put the left endpoint, comma, right endpoint. So we do have a left endpoint of 3, a right endpoint of 10, so 3, comma, 10. And then uh, put the grouping symbols around them that we need. And it works just like uh, the grouping symbols on the number line work. If we don't include the endpoint, we put parentheses. If we do include the endpoint, we put brackets. Well, in this case, we don't include the endpoint, so we put parentheses. 3, 10 would be the interval notation for that. And then uh, the 5, uh, less than or equal to uh, T. Sorry. Less than 12. That would be <coughs> uh, on the number line be part between 5 and 12. So the interval notation, you have 5 on the left endpoint, 12 for the right endpoint. And we don't include uh, the 12, so that would be parentheses. But we do include, you have the equal to 5, so we would include 5, so that would be a bracket. That would be interval notation for that particular interval. Now, when we get to the one-sided inequalities like uh, x, being greater than, oh, let's say 10. Well, <clears throat> of course, graph-wise, that is uh, everything bigger than 10. So we are talking 10 and bigger here, or bigger than 10. So that side. Uh, the interval notation, though. Well, the interval notation, you want to. Uh, Right in, uh, left endpoint, comma, right endpoint. Well, we do have a left endpoint here of 10, but as far as it goes uh, on the right there, it just keeps going forever on the right. And so what we use in those particular cases is we use a symbol for that. It's the infinity symbol, kind of the sideways <coughs> aid is what it looks like. Um, but that's what we would use in the case of uh, pointing infinitely in the direction to the right there. All right, and then uh, parentheses, we don't include the 10 because you don't have the equal to part. And then also in uh, infinity, you always use uh, a parentheses on it. Now, if we uh, kind of flip things around here, say we have y is less than or equal to uh, negative 3. Well, that's everything negative 3 and less. So that would be the le less than side of negative 3, this side, including this negative 3 there. So we use a bracket, square bracket. Uh, interval notation, well, <coughs> the left endpoint, comma, right endpoint. Well, in this case, we've got something on the right there, endpoint wise, so we've got a negative 3. But this one keeps going, going to the left, infinitely. 
So we're going to use another infinity, but uh, this one's pointing toward the negative side of things. Negative, uh, more and more negative, the numbers would get out this way. So for that reason, if it points to the left like that, that's a negative infinity symbol that we'd use there. Now to finish this off, we'd uh, use the grouping symbols. Like I said on infinity, you always use parentheses and then the square bracket for the negative 3 because we want to include the equal to negative 3. All right, let's go ahead and talk about solving some linear inequalities. Well, good news is <coughs> to solve a linear inequality, you use the same basic steps as you do for solving a linear equation. You want to get the x or the variable on a side by itself. So in this particular problem, I'd want to add 7 to both sides and then divide by 3. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to add the 7 first, so we get 3x is greater than or equal to negative 13 plus 7 be negative 6. And then all we have to do is divide off the 3. And so we wind up with x greater than or equal to negative 2. And then they'll want you to you know, do the same things as we were doing earlier. That's everything bigger than negative 2. So the graph be everything greater than negative 2 equal to negative 2, so we put the square bracket with that. Then the interval notation, the left endpoint, comma, right endpoint notation. Well, you got negative 2 on the left, and then it points infinitely to the right, so that's infinity. Square bracket on the negative 2. All right. <clears throat> so the solving of linear inequalities is much the same. Now, let me note, note this one. On this one, uh, you know, there's a couple ways we might go with this one. <clears throat> Let me mention both of them just in case you go with one or the other. Uh, <clears throat> I like to always get the variables on the left side, especially on inequalities. It just makes it reading the inequality easier. And so it might be easier <clears throat> here to just move the uh, 9t over. But like I said, for inequalities, I like to get the variables all always on the left side. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 5t here. <clears throat> and that'll make this uh, 4t plus 6 is less than 0. And then I subtract the 6. And I get uh, from both sides 4t is less than negative 6. And then divide by 4. I do get t is less than, reduce those by 2, so it would be negative 3 halves. <clears throat> so I'd do the uh, number line less than negative 3 halves in the interval notation. Um, less than negative 3 halves in the interval notation. Well, it's pointing infinitely, let's see, pointing infinitely to the left. So that's negative infinity and negative 3 halves, parentheses, parentheses. <clears throat> what I would note is, let's uh, do this a second way. 9t plus 6 is less than 5t. If I do choose to go ahead and subtract 9t, let's uh, uh, mention that. Uh, it just sets up you know, a, a different scenario here. Um, 6 is less than negative 4t, well, uh, <coughs> you ultimately wind up with the same answer, but uh, there are a few few things that uh, that you have to talk about to do that. But let me, uh, let me mention this one thing, then we'll come back to that, I'll go back down to this problem. <coughs> yeah, there is uh, one important rule for linear inequalities. Of course, you don't have this in any equations because you don't have inequalities. But here it is. If you multiply or divide both sides of a linear equality by a negative number, you must, well, you must, turns out, reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. Must reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. Here's what I mean by that. 
negative 4x plus 1 is uh, greater than or equal to 25. Well, we're going to subtract 1. starts off about the same. Negative 4x, then, we would have is greater than or equal to 24. All right, well, next step, we're going to divide by negative 4. And that is where this little rule here kicks in. Anytime you multiply or divide by a negative number, which I divided here by negative 4 on both sides, that changes this direction. The direction of the symbol changes. So we've got greater than or equal to changes to less than or equal to. Uh, that makes it x on the left, and uh, 4 divided by negative 6 uh, negative 4 is negative 6. Okay, um, <clears throat> which means the less than side of negative 6. So it'd be less, everything less than negative 6 equal to negative 6 also. So in bracket, um, negative infinity, negative 6, be interval notation. Now, if I didn't reverse that, <laughs> Symbol, I'd be talking about the other side. X is greater than or equal to, and it'd be the other side, negative 6. But if you check check some numbers out, <clears throat> they just would not work. Like over here, we have 0. Plug in 0 for X. That would get us uh, 1 is greater than 25. It just doesn't work. It, it is the negative uh, less than or equal to side of negative 6 there. So that's an important rule. Now notice here, I didn't uh, reverse it. I subtracted one both sides. I didn't reverse it. If you go back up to uh, previous problems that we worked, I added, I divided here by 3, but that didn't change it. It's still greater than or equal to because I didn't. I divided, but I divided by a positive 3 in that case and down here. Now, back to, uh, back to this one that I started earlier. Yeah, um, if, I, if I do this, I've finish this out, I've got to divide by a negative 4 here, and of course that gives me my negative 3 halves there, but <coughs> divided by negative 4, so that means change that to a greater than, and uh, yeah, what I would say is negative 3 halves is greater than t. Actually that turns out to be the same as the one that we got there earlier, um, but like I said, I like to have the variables on the same side uh, always, so t, the left side, so t and the negative 3 has, let's switch sides with those, and the inequality always has to point to the same thing, it's pointing to the t here, yeah, so you see that inequality is the same as that one that we had. All right, okay, so divide by negative, you've got to reverse the direction of the symbol. All right, let's go to problem 6 here.